today we're gonna tap birch trees for birch syrup. So first, these are all the stuff we need to uh, tap birch trees. And so the first of all, we have these jugs. These are gonna be our like our pails or our jugs or whatever that's gonna collect the syrup out on the. They're gonna the be hung sap. on the trees. They're gonna be hung on the trees. They're gonna collect the sap in here. And then these are going to be, this hex pipe is actually going to be our spiles. We're going to uh, trim them to the same, to the exact length. We're going to drill into the tree about an inch and a half of this bit. And then take that rubber mallet and pound these uh, spiles in as far as we need. We, gotta, we have to cut them with this sawzall first for length. We have to cut them for each one of these. And here are also some that we have. Uh, pails to hang on the trees and we're gonna hang them on with this paracord here and another thing we're gonna have this um, alcohol we're gonna rub it on the tree and the spile just to sanitize the spot and then then it'll go in here and then after that like it'll uh, hang there for like 24 hours and then we take the jugs off and then um, fill fill these five gallon buckets up and put them in the freezer and then after these are full and the freezer is full with these buckets then we're gonna use a cooker that a friend of ours has and then we're gonna cook the syrup out of it and this this little this stick right here is just a measuring stick we're gonna pound this in the snow and it's four feet high so and we're just gonna try to uh, place the spile in the tree about this four feet off the ground this is just our measuring stick. So right now we're making these spiles. These are gonna, we're gonna cut them at four and three quarter inches and we're gonna cut them off with the sawzall and then sand off all the burrs uh, with the sander and then wash them and then take them out. this rope that we're gonna tie around the can or around the pail to fasten it to the tree and we just put a loop around the end we're gonna make another loop here to put it around the pail around the tree and over and through the other loop and tighten it like that and then tie it off so we're gonna make some of these doing right now is just washing these again make sure we get any dust or anything off because these were milk jugs and if the milk is it, if there's any milk in here still it really starts smelling weird so we just gotta we just wash it with soap but these smell fine so we're just uh, rinsing them again and letting them dry Here are all the buckets and jugs that we've washed. So we're ready now to actually start tapping now. Okay, here we are. We're ready out here with all our pails and everything in one load. Watt has a lot has a lot of stuff as you can see. And Chloe, and we're gonna go and go into the woods right here. 
this birch forest and look for the trees to tap. It's really deep snow. So see this big tree? It's at least almost a foot wide. They have to be at least eight or more inches wide. And you can tell if it has lots of, if there's lots of branches, like a big crown on top. Lots of uh, sap has to go into those branches, so it's gonna be more sap going through the tree. There you go. Now this is a birch tree here, although it has some red, like fungus or something on. This birch paper, paper birch, I think it's what it's called. And then this dark stuff over here, it's a poplar. It's not, we're not going to tap these because they don't produce enough sap to make syrup. It's just very dark stuff and they have, they're, they're just dark all the way up to the top. So we're going to make sure we don't tap those. Here's our first tap right there. We just cut a hole in the side here and it sticks right in there as you can see. And then we tied it off right here, back here. So it's gonna fill up hopefully. It also says, it also helps if you put it on the south side because the sun shines on it, it warms it up faster and the sap will start running faster. We have that stick to measure how high we have to drill. There. Can we put rubbing alcohol on this paper towel to sanitize the bit and the wood on the tree where we're going to drill it. Oh yeah, that one, yeah. Yep. That's number three right here. Okay, Chloe, you can rub that right there. Okay. <laughs> There you go. You have to drill up at a 20 to 30 degree angle into the tree so the sap runs down the hole into the spile and, and into the can. And we just did, we just drill about inch and a half into the tree and use a 5 8 inch bit here. There we go. And I punctured a hole right in there, and we're just gonna slide it right like that. Okay, then we're gonna put twine around it. This is already sap running out of there. Let's see how it tastes. It tastes just like birch water.
Hey guys, I'm back and the boys have been collecting, collecting cert while I've been gone into Montana. And now we're out here and they're taking us on the, the cert path. And they're gonna, we're gonna gather the cert this morning. You drill this one too? Yeah, we drill this one, but it doesn't even have anything. Huh, that's weird. Nothing it's coming out of it. True. Wow, right there's a hole. Yeah, we drill That's two. amazing. Strange. I don't know why that is. Okay, here they've got one. And uh, looks like that one. When did you, how long has that been dripping? Uh, since yesterday afternoon. Okay, so it's got like uh, half a gallon, a little over half a gallon. Very cool. Slush in there. Take it a bit. There we go. Nice. Whoa, that has a lot. That one full? Basically. Pretty much. Oh no, it's only half full. Yeah. Uh -oh. But a little bit more than the other one. Very cool. So all they did is they drilled a hole, put a little apex pipe right in there, and punched a hole in the jar in the jug. Oh, and it's dripping, look at that. Did we some? They got them everywhere in the woods here. I think they tried to find the biggest trees. We tapped that one also just yesterday. Okay, whoa, I fell in a hole. Still above my knees back here. This is awesome. This is fun. Be out here in the sun. It's not even that cold. It's probably 35 degrees or something like that right now. Oh, just trying to get out of the snow here. That's a big tree right there. Does that one give a lot? Yeah, it's a gallon. Oh, oh nice. Gallon. Very gallon. cool. Gallon. All right, throw it in there, buddy. Okay, wait, I'll... Okay, what, right, hold it. Good times right there. There's a drop to reach that, Dad. Is it? Mm -hmm. Check it out. Now we're at the glass jar, the quart jar route. We ran out of buckets, so these they had to use the quart jars. Nice. Here we go. Cool. And on to the next one. Oh, wow. oh this one is shot right back, fella. Mm -hmm. Isn't that tasty, Wyatt, huh? Mm -hmm. Check this one out, guys. This one's got a lot of drips. Too bad we're running out of bigger buckets.
Ah ja, es ist alles sehen, ne? Now we're running all the sap through a microfiber cloth to get rid of all the dirt and then later we'll filter it again. Check it out, this birch syrup sap is just evaporating at high rates of speed. This has been a fun project. The boys are really, really uh, digging in and enjoying it. So they come out here yesterday afternoon, they cooked down about 15 gallons. And I think they're, this is probably about this holds five gallons per bin here. And looks like this one is a little hotter, so it's it's evaporating faster. It looks like it went down about halfway already in a couple hours here. So it evaporates pretty fast. Probably can do 20 gallons a day. Well, tonight we're having a hot dog cookout <laughs> while we're cooking our birch syrup, birch sap into syrup. And we're just simply opening this up and roasting our hot dogs and later we'll come out and have some s'mores. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to pancake syrup. Yep. <clears throat> All this morning, the boys are firing up the, the cooker again, and yesterday they cooked down 40 gallons, so they're probably hoping to do about the same today. So we'll see how far they get. Keep the thing rolling all day long. Okay, we're on the, the trail here again to gather our syrup this morning. I'm still trying to figure out why the boys went this far back in the woods when there's 50 birch trees right up against the house, but I think they were looking for the bigger ones. That's cool. So they're way back here. A little frosty this morning, so I'm not sure we can how well it's going to work to get all of them right away. We're gonna wait till it warms up a little bit, but I think we can get the quart jars first. A little bit froze. We're out here this morning gathering sap again. These jars are all too small, so they overflow every morning and evening. We're cooking as fast as we can, but we can't keep, quite keep up. 
getting too much sap. Avalon Cylinder PJs, <laughs> chopping firewood. <laughs> oh, this is just too much fun, you guys. Got our firewood stacked up. Still getting the last of the sap this morning. We got about, uh, I don't know, 12 or more gallons <laughs> cooking here. I think yesterday we did around 35 gallons. I don't know, something like that. 35, 40, the boys are keeping track. So right here are the two pots that we're going to use to uh, boil down the, or evaporate the syrup or the concentrate. We have five gallons right here. That was from almost 110 gallons of sap that was cooked down. So now we're going to put it on here and slowly evaporate it until it's syrup. So we're checking the sugar content right now. Okay, so it's above 30, but it only goes to 30. Okay. Yeah, so we have the one that goes to 60. Okay, we should almost check the other one. So now we know we're up in the upper 30s. Yeah. So now we're going to check the other one. We're shooting for around 60 for sugar content. not showing it starts at where well, I mean it starts at 60 sorry it starts at 60 and it goes to 90 so okay. it only starts at 60 so we don't know when we're between 30 and 60 we don't know where it's at huh? yeah we don't for sure know where it's at so okay so we just know that it's a little bit higher than 30 but not quite the 60 yet yep getting there it smells it smells like syrup it's awesome mm. well Ethan's gonna do a final check on this Surf back here, it looks it's looking like it's probably about done. It's getting pretty thick. So what do you call that? That's a bricks measurement, is that right? Refractometer. What's it called? Fractometer? Refractometer. Refractometer? Refractometer or something? I don't know. Yeah, um Whoa. Like is it that? It's kind of hard to see, but it looks like over 65. Let's see if I can see it. Yeah. Come on. Let's see, we're 65. Come on there. That's there on the bottom. That's why it's bright there. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. there you go. Yep, there you can see. So I guess it's time to get that off of there. So shut it down, Ethan. Cool. Okay, we're gonna cool it off and bottle it. Awesome. Yeah, 
and this has still got a little ways to go. Have you checked this? Oh. Check this one with the other one, see if it's uh, over 30. Is that the 61, Ethan, or the 30? 30. Okay. I don't think you guys need to put that much on, really. Yeah, there's Just a drop. Oh, yeah, okay. Two drops. Uh, okay. All right, Avalon, what is it? Uh, like. Ships ahoy, matey. <laughs> like 29 or something. Okay, it's about 30, so we're a little yeah. ways yet. Another couple hours of boiling. So, Justin, how long did it take to boil that top, that back one down? Uh, that, so that thing is a quart and a half. It's a gallon and a half. Then it cooked down a little bit, and and then I get added half, uh, half a gallon on that thing. So it took eight and a half hours for it to cook down. The straining has begun. We're still gonna be cooking quite a bit more, but we wanted to get what we have into jars. So we're running it through this, I'm not sure what it is, it's like a cheesecloth. Okay, that didn't strain it too much, so we're gonna run it through a coffee filter. And that looks like it's going through okay. And that'll be pretty fine. Now the reason this syrup is so dark is because it's our first time at it for one thing. And I think when you do birch syrup, we're absolutely no experts, so somebody might be able to tell us differently, but you should simmer it really slow. But we actually, it boiled quite a bit in the beginning at least. Uh, so that's why it turned out this dark, we think. So what we're going to do, we've been trying now the last couple batches, is just to boil it, try to simmer it, I should say, uh, not, not boil it, and that might make it a lighter syrup. And if it has this darker color, it also has a little different flavor, like it's maybe a little sharper and almost tastes a little bit more like molasses, something like that. So. It's maybe not as good for pancake syrup, but I can use it in so many different ways. We'll probably even put it in our coffee. I like it, I like the flavor. It reminds me of cane syrup. But it doesn't really taste a lot like maple syrup, I don't think. Some half and half. A little bit of what we call collagen. And... And we're gonna get some coffee in there. But the ingredient that we're gonna be using today is a specially designed sweetener only found in the north woods of the United States and Canada, North America. It's called homemade birch syrup. Whoa, that looks pretty amazing. Can't wait to taste that. Uh oh. <laughs> there, I broke the spell. Okay, you taste it, honey. Mmm, it's delish. It's a little bit of a caramely taste. It is, it? yeah. Okay. All right, you try it, babe. That is amazing. I love the flavor in here. Mmm, that's good. It is good. This is a good cup of coffee. Okay, the ultimate deal right here. Okay, there's a gallon of syrup. Oopsie. There's a gallon of syrup, another gallon, another gallon of sap. So it is a lot of work to make this uh, syrup. It's like over 100 gallons of buckets of sap that we carried out of the woods just for one gallon of syrup. So this right here is probably, I don't know, five or 10 gallons of syrup, probably 10 gallons right here. 
So a lot of cooking. The boys did 90% of the work. That's yeah. for sure. Thank <laughs> you.